Okay, so what if you want to work with a more complex spline than just a curved path, a simple curved path that I showed you in the last two tutorials? Uh, those were easy enough to do using uh, the Amino Snake uh, plugin and the Puppet tool, but I showed you if you want a more complex uh, spline shape that it's almost impossible to try to get the kind of bendy arm to bend along that path inside of After Effects. So I'm in uh, Cinema 4D now and I have this uh, spline path that uh, draws the cursive shape of uh, the cursive word high and uh, so we're gonna make a bendy arm go along the spline. So the first thing we need to do is just give this some geometry that we can put our bendy arm material onto. So what I'm gonna do is just make a make a plane and uh, let me go into my perspective view here. So I got my plane here. Now I gotta wrap this around the spline and I'm gonna use the aptly named spline wrap to do that. So I'm gonna make the spline wrap a child of the plane and you see in the spline wrap settings here I have a spline uh, field that I can drag a spline to so I'm just gonna drag my spline into there. Alright so first things first we got to scale down this spline or this uh, plane and I'm just gonna bring the height down so it looks more like a, a ribbon kind of shape. And the next thing I got to do is we have all this chunkiness going on. That's because our, splint, our plane only has a width segment of 20. So I'm just going to bring this up. And I'm just going to bring this all the way up to like 500. And you can see we have our uh, nice curved edges here on our uh, plane that's wrapped on the spline. Uh, so one thing uh, I'm going to tell you is that depending on your width segments you can get these kind of points uh, you can get these points on the edges of your your uh, paths here uh, so you want to make sure you pick a width segment number that kind of just rounds out and flattens those flat edges there so you don't have these points so just be mindful of that when you're working with your own uh, spline so now we got our uh, geometry that we can put, put a material on. So let's just create a new material. <clears throat> now I'm going to turn off the color and the specular and I'm just going to use the luminance channel to paste our or to put our uh, arm uh, layer onto, arm material onto. And the reason for that is is because at the end of the day this is going to be a 2D uh, animation and so anything we make in 3d space in cinema 4d we want to achieve the look of a 2d object or a 2d layer so by using this luminance object or the luminance channel to put our uh, arm image in here which is right here this Photoshop file uh, by putting it in the luminance channel it's not going to react to uh, uh, shadows or uh, any kind of lighting effects. It's just going to be a flat uh, material color. So that's perfect for what we want. So I'm just going <clears> to <throat> go in here and make sure you got your alpha applied as well. I just copied and pasted the uh, arm layer into there. And we're just going to apply this material onto this plane object. And so I'm going to render this out. <clears throat> and you can see that we have this weirdness going on right here <clears throat> and kind of up here as well. You can see that once we want to actually get to animate this, and we're going to animate it by just uh, adjusting this offset, that especially when we have uh, the, the offset animated, that this isn't going to work at all. And the reason for that is, is because if I go and turn uh, to the side view here, all those spline paths are just occupying the same... A Z space in 3D so all of these polygons are overlapping each other from this uh, plane object so the thing we have to do next is actually adjust and move all these plane or these spline points to different uh, Z depths basically so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to worry about uh, these spots where the the planes are overlapping uh, so I'm going to start with this uh, point on the top of the eye here and I'm going to zoom in on both the right view and the top view. So what I want to do is I'm just going <clears> to <throat> kind of bring this uh, Bezier handles out. And you can see in our side view here that we're going to have this nice arc, uh, arcing path that our uh, plane is going to wrap around. 
and that's uh, that's what the kind of look that we're going to want to get. So we want this kind of almost like a ribbon that kind of flows and bends and arcs over. So again, I'm zooming in here. You can see we have this nice uh, bending. And if I render this now, <clears throat> it's not overlapping anymore. So I'm going to do the same thing and uh, kind of as a, as a ribbon would would work. I'm gonna so this is kind of flowing over to the front so I'm gonna move this point over as well this bottom part of where the H and the I kind of connect and uh, I'm also gonna do the same for this part because uh, as this path curves over uh, I'm just gonna have this kind of gradually you can see especially from the top view gonna have this path gradually uh, come forward again. So I, I just want to make this spline path as smooth as possible as we're giving some more 3D depth to the flow of this spline. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing where I want this arcing uh, path <clears throat> at the bottom of this H. So you can see as I move this Bezier handle that uh, we're getting more of this arcing uh, going on on the bottom here. So if I move this around, uh, I want to make sure that all of our uh, pieces of our ribbon or our arm kind of stays forward. Because you see, if I move this this point here, we're kind of losing uh, the flatness of the uh, plane. So you got to be careful. So how much you're uh, moving. So uh, this part of the H, I'm going to need to go behind uh, this uh, the beginning of the H here. So I'm going to move this forward. And also move this front, this very first point forward as well. So you can see that as I go to my side view again, we're getting a little bit more depth, uh, and we're losing, we're getting rid of that overlap. So I'm going to go back into here. You can see that we still have a little bit of uh, weirdness here and some overlap uh, at the bottom of this H right here. So I'm going to go to my top view again. You can see we have uh, a really weird distorted path. So we're just going to kind of fix that a little bit and uh, make that kind of rounded off and that looks a lot better uh, we kind of have our two plane our planes inter interconnecting or intersecting at this point as well so let's uh, fix that kind of move this forward so now we got our, our uh, flat uh, path again or flat shape again <clears throat> kind of round this out here as well so now if I render that out you can kind of see we want we, let's get a little bit more of a space between this H here This is uh, this back part of the H is kind of flattening out. Let's just move this, this bottom point, and uh, it's looking a lot better. All right, so let's render that, and uh, let's just double check and make sure that once we do this offset, that uh, nothing's overlapping anymore. Um, so that's looking good all the way through. Let's bring that back to the offset back to zero. And uh, let's just double check from our side view here. And everything's looking pretty good. Alright, so we can adjust this a little bit more. Uh, make sure all the bottom points kind of line up. Uh, so I'm going to use this uh, bottom part of the. Uh, uh, the edge of this uh, line right here to kind of measure or line these uh, bottom parts up. And since our uh, arm is going to come from off screen, make sure that uh, your spline is kind of off to the screen as well. And all right, that's looking looking good. We just kind of round out this bottom. We get more of a flatter, 
flatter shape right there. Let's try to get back some of this flatness here as well. Sometimes you got to adjust the uh, bezier handles, how they kind of curve as well to get some of that flatness back. There's also some other options you can kind of play around with, and I think it all depends on just the shape of your path. Is uh, Are these settings in the spline wrap where you can adjust the banking and you can also adjust the up vector and uh, sometimes when you mess around with both of these uh, that can help you keep your uh, your your plane kind of flat and flush to like the Z plane so it's always facing forward towards the camera uh, so just keep in mind that you can use uh, mess around with these couple options here and uh, do that so we can see that we're my hand kind of flipped so let's go to a negative banking here <clears throat> render that so that's looking pretty good uh, let me just go down here and just slightly adjust that bottom of this H again all right so it's a lot of just tweaking these uh, these points and adjusting the angle of the bezier curves and all this all, uh, the handles uh, to get the uh, the look that you want. I mean, every every spline path is going to be the same, but uh, using these this kind of workflow is is uh, kind of works for everything that you want to do. Uh, writing out uh, or uh, putting a uh, uh, a spline wrap on this plane and putting the material on here. Uh, so the nice thing about working in cinema is that okay, we have this flat, um, this flat 2D looking layer now that we can bring into After Effects. Uh, but the nice thing about being in cinema is, is that say we wanted to add some subtle uh, shading and some sh subtle shadowing here to kind of. Uh, really give the, the the form of the shape because once uh, especially in this H here you're kind of losing everything's kind of meshing together here and it could be hard to read I mean here it's not that big of a deal because you can easily read out this H and this I but uh, with some other more complex splines maybe you maybe you want a little bit more um, disconnect between or, or some contrast between so you can actually make out this edge of this uh, shape right here so what we can do is go into our material here and go into our diffusion channel and we're just gonna turn that on and we're gonna add some ambient occlusion to give some some nice shading to kinda uh, give some contrast between uh, the front of the H and this back of the H part right here so I'm going to turn off specular. I want this to uh, affect the luminance because luminance channel is what all we're using for this material. And I'm going to go in here and let's just do a render and see how that looks so far. Uh, you really can't make anything out right now because uh, we need to adjust some of these settings. So uh, one thing that I noticed that kind of helps it out a little bit is adjusting this contrast. Let's render that again. So now you can see very subtly uh, th that this kind of darkened over here and if I move this uh, this little color uh, this black color uh, chiclet thing here uh, and render that again and now you get that a little bit darker and what if you want to have a little bit more dark over here uh, you can just adjust some of these points I think if I adjust how much this curves out maybe that'll help Okay, there we go. So I just sh uh, made the curve a little bit more sh uh, shallow, the angle of the curve a little bit more shallow uh, here. You see from my side view, here's that arced path. And it used to be a lot more, uh, a lot uh, wider angle, so I just brought that down. And uh, you can really make out the shading, or the, whoop, the shading here now. So even at the top here on the top of the H, uh, by using the ambient occlusion, 
uh, you got this nice shadow here, so you can make out this uh, word a little bit better. Uh, and also keep in mind some of these angles. Uh, you want to have an, a wide enough angle that the, because if you have it too shallow, uh, you'll get that, that kind of look. And you also have that overlap all over again. So let's just uh, adjust that a little bit there. So you see I, I moved that point and now we have this weird overlap again. So be, be careful what you're doing with the uh, Bezier handles here. Uh, so, all right, so now all we gotta do is just go and, like I said before, just adjust that offset. So I'm gonna hit a keyframe at 40 frames about and uh, just bring this offset up to 100. And let's just play that out. So we have an arm coming in, and uh, let's actually get this uh, arm out a little bit higher here, and let's set a new keyframe, and uh, can adjust this angle, this uh, bezier handle right here. There we go. All right, so let's go back to our spline wrap. Let's maybe make this a little bit uh, longer of an animation. There we go. Uh, we can go into our timeline here and uh, let's adjust this so it has a little bit more of an ease, ease in here. Cool, so we got a little overshoot as well. Uh, because I adjusted the spline a little bit lower than uh, this value here. Let's do one final render. And uh, I already rendered this out previously. So that's what you get. And then you just bring that into After Effects, uh, composite that into the scene uh, in there. And uh, then you can have your little bendy arm forming, whatever word you want or whatever. Uh, any kind of object bending along a path. Uh, so you just bring it into cinema uh, using the luminance channel so you don't have any shading. And if you do want shading, uh, you can mess around with the ambient occlusion in your diffusion channel. And, uh, and that is it. Thank you guys for watching.